So welcome to the information about the microbial world when we're discussing the marine ecosystem. What we want to talk about here in this first lecture is all the microscopic stuff, the stuff we can't see, but the stuff that inhabits, inhibits, or lives in the entire marine ecosystem. <clears throat> so an amazing thing happens when you grab a microscope and a scoop of water out of the ocean you'll be amazed with the amount of biodiversity you can find in there. So the marine ecosystem, like a land-based ecosystem, depends upon the microbial world for its basic functions. So what we're going to talk about are the microscopic living organisms, and we're going to talk just briefly about the non-living organisms or agents as we call it that exhibit or that live in the marine ecosystem that being the viruses All right so this is by far the most abundant form of life in the marine ecosystem is the microscopic or microbial stuff and they are the producer base so on land we focus on the plants oh look at the grass and the trees and the plants of the rainforest as the producer base in the ocean it's the microscopic stuff that is a producer base. There's very, very few plants that live in the ocean. Most of the oxygen production in the ocean, which is about half of what we, the planet has, about half of that comes from the ocean, that comes from the microscopic organisms that live in the ocean. So incredibly important group to focus on when we're talking about food chains and food webs. But let's start with the marine viruses. All right, so marine viruses, officially we're going to say these are non-cellular infectious agents that, oh, that live in the marine ecosystem. And, well, I shouldn't say live, that are in the marine ecosystem. The thing to keep in mind about viruses is that they need... A host cell for reproduction. This is one of the reasons why we don't put them in the living category, is that they can't survive on their own. They cannot live outside of a host, or I keep saying live, they cannot function outside of a host. And what we're going to see is, you know, without that host, the viruses are inactive. They're non-functional. But once they come into contact with a host, then they can become very functional, go through their life cycle or their active cycle, and do their job. Now, viruses have a basic structure. There's a nucleic acid core. This is usually made up of DNA or RNA information. <clears throat> so we'll see that core of the virus, the genetic material, a little bigger, is made up of DNA or RNA. And then when we look at the structure of it, it has a structure called a capsid. Now the capsid is a protein coat that will form the basic structure of the virus. Uh, the protein coat is composed of a variety of different protein structures. All right, so there's a ton of different proteins associated with the capsid of a virus. And what it's going to do is help us differentiate between one virus type and another based upon the type of proteins associated with the virus. All right, now we're not going to get too heavy into marine viruses. Uh, the big thing I want you guys to remember about them is that they play a role in disease, health issues, etc. associated with marine organisms. That's the important side of the viruses in the marine world, is how they influence or impact the health of marine organisms. Now, looking at viruses, uh, we want to look at what they're made up of and how they work and what they do. One category of viruses to just briefly mention is a group called retroviruses. And these are viruses that use RNA as their genetic material. 
all other viruses are using DNA. Lysogenic viruses are viruses that reproduce by inserting themselves into the host and blending their DNA into the host DNA. Okay, so lysogenic are the type of viruses that what we're going to see is their DNA incorporates into the DNA of the host cell. Okay, once that DNA is incorporated into the host cell, it doesn't ever go away. It's the virus that keeps on giving. It never leaves the host cell. It stays in the DNA. So when the host cell replicates, the viral information replicates along with it and keeps replicating and replicating and replicating. In our world, the example is if you guys got chicken pox, that virus is in your body, and later in life it becomes shingles. We see similar viruses in the marine ecosystem. Now, the lytic viruses will take over a host cell, replicate, and destroy the host cell upon exit. So they build up a bunch of tiny, tiny little viral particles inside of the host cell, and then they rupture and explode the host cell as they leave the host cell and go to attack other host cells. So in our world, the flu. Think about getting the flu. You get sick, viruses are attacking your body, they're destroying your cells, and they go and attack more, more cells in your body. That's the lytic viruses. We see the same type in the marine ecosystem. And then there are bacteriophages. These are viruses that specifically attack bacteria. That's the only thing they go after. So that's why they're called bacteriophage. A phage is a type of virus. But again, it's a specific type of virus that goes after bacterial cells in the marine ecosystem. And these guys are going to be important. I'll show you in a few minutes here what they do. So, all right, so here's where the bacterial phages become very important. They attack a host cell. And they make a bunch of copies of themselves and build up and build up and build up and build up. And then they rupture the host cell. That's what's called lysic. So lysis is when a virus <clears throat> infects a host cell and causes it to rupture. Now, say, okay, it's a big deal. It exploded a host cell. Well, multiply that by a couple billion, and you have billions of destroyed, ruptured host cells. The ruptured host cells contribute to a thing called DOM, D-O-M, dissolved, oh, dissolved, organic matter. Little particles of dissolved organic matter, decomposing material. That then gets used and picked up by producers. So DOM, Dissolved organic matter is used by the producer base as a source of nutrients. Okay, so let me oh, get that up there. Let me scoot this over. All right, so <clears throat> let's look at the food chain here. You got your shark. Shark eats the big fish, the big fish eat the small fish, the small fish eat the zooplankton, the zooplankton eats the phytoplankton. Or go the other direction. Producer base, phytoplankton, feeds microscopic zooplankton. The zooplankton feed the small fish, the small fish feed the larger fish, the larger fish feed the sharks. The phytoplankton is going to be able to grow and survive when it gets dissolved organic matter. So this is where viruses become very important in the food chain. They contribute to 
the food chain by exploding cells and releasing the organic matter for the first step of the food chain. Okay, so viruses considered, technically we consider them non-living organisms, but they play an incredibly important role in the food chain in the marine ecosystem. So, okay, so now let's get into the living stuff. The simplest living things in the marine ecosystem are prokaryotes, single-celled organisms. The prokaryote term refers to a group. It's not a classification level. It's not a domain, a kingdom. It's just a grouping or a kind of a category heading. Within the prokaryotes category, we have the archaea. Sometimes they're called archaea bacteria. They're not bacteria. They are a different group. That's why we call them the archaea. They're single celled. There's some similarities with the bacteria. They actually have more similarities with eukaryotes than they do with bacteria, though. But what we find out with the archaea is that these guys, man, oh man, they are tolerant of these extreme environments. So the picture on the left is a thermal vent in the bottom of the ocean. It's called a black smoker. So you have the earth, the crust of the ocean, cracked. Magma is coming up and it's hitting seawater. So that's creating that plume of smoke. Incredible pressure, zero sunlight, hot, hot magma temperatures hitting salt water, just these extreme environmental conditions. And you got stuff living there. You have this archaea group. You have these organisms living there, forming the basis of the food chain. So some of these extreme environments are things like those thermal vents. Other places we may find them, salt flats. So the areas next to the shore that get a bunch of salt water onto it and then the water dries up and it's left the salt behind and every day, every day this keeps happening, you get this layer and layers and layers and layers of salt forming incredibly salty environment plants aren't going to grow there animals aren't going to live there but this group of archaea they're going to live there they survive there they are functional in that environment okay so archaea are primarily the at this point we're going to call them the extreme environmental organisms they are the basis of the food chain in those environments also in the prokaryotic group are going to be the bacteria. Now, different domain, domain bacteria, different kingdom, right? different group. Marine bacteria, we see all sorts of shapes here. We got spirals, we have circles or spheres, we have little rods, we have rings, we have squiggles, lots of different shapes for the marine bacteria, all single-celled. Never do they work together, single-celled. Um, a major feature of the marine bacteria that I want you guys to remember, let me put the little da -dos. their cell wall contains a polysaccharide called peptidoglycan. All right, it's a type of polysaccharide comparable to starch or cellulose or chitin or things like that. That's a major defining feature of bacteria is this cell wall of peptidoglycan. So if you guys have ever gone to the doctor and they said you got you know, this bacterial infection and it's gram positive or gram negative, that's referring to how much peptidoglycan is in the cell wall of the bacteria that's causing your infection. All right? So marine bacteria, unbelievably abundant globally we can't go anywhere and not come across the bacteria from the polar seas to the tropics to the all these different areas we're gonna see marine bacteria all right so we got viruses in the prokaryotes as part of the microbial world what we're gonna start talking about in the next lecture will be all these other single celled organisms that play incredibly important roles in the entire marine food chain and the food web of the marine ecosystem.